Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, and good morning to everyone. Let me start the presentation. Um, okay, change and innovation. These are two fascinating phenomena that sparked my interest a while ago, and uh, since then be uh, became my passion. And uh, I'm not alone. People have been trying to understand change and innovation for centuries trying to find answers to questions like, what is the link between change and innovation? Uh, can we avoid change? How to manage both? And is there in, an approach uh, that can help us to achieve the outcomes we hope for? Upfront, I want to say that, of course, we won't be able to cover both topics in great depth. And it's likely you will uh, have more questions than answers when I finish my talk. But I hope this will be just the beginning of our discussion, as uh, in my opinion, it's questions, not answers, lead to new discoveries and insights. So let's start with a question about the link between innovation and change. In my view, uh, the link is straightforward. Innovation always creates change. But change does not always trigger innovation. For example, if your company, if your company culture changes in a such way uh, that blame culture becomes normal, then surely this change won't result in more innovation. But when we talk about innovation, what do we really mean by, by innovation? There are many definitions out there, many good definitions out there, uh, but I use this one as it includes, in my opinion, three key uh, elements. Innovation always involves, of course, new ideas. Those ideas create value and by nature, it is a change process. So innovation sounds like an exciting um, endeavor and you can hear many companies talk about innovation and see innovation uh, you know, among many companies' values. But how often are we satisfied with innovation outcomes? For example, what's your, what's your opinion on that? Let's uh, see what the audience think uh, and um, uh, what, how you satisfied with innovation outcomes at your company. Good. I see. Uh, I see voting started. Oh, it's it's great to see uh, so far that um, uh, uh, oh, it's changing. <laughs> So it's satisfied, not satisfied, roughly. Um, then let's give a couple of more minutes because I think it's very interesting uh, uh, to to hear your uh, opinion on that. Let's give a couple of more seconds. Okay, so what do we have? It's uh, it's it's great to see that uh, actually for, uh, forty two percent of you who voted uh, satisfied with uh, innovation outcomes. However, the alarming uh, fifty two percent are not satisfied, and we don't have uh, uh, anybody voted for very satisfied. And uh, mm, there are some that uh, they actually don't have any innovation outcomes. So, uh, you can see now uh, uh, the results uh, of um, uh, 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 of McKinsey survey, and they actually, when they surveyed uh, company, uh, they found that uh, while business leaders do agree that innovation is important for growth. Uh, according to their results, it were uh, actually only 6% who were satisfied with innovation per performance. So those who uh, we have uh, voted uh, that they satisfied with innovation outcomes, you are, in a, uh, you are not, um, 
how to say, uh, it's, it's great because not many companies out there are like, actually satisfied. So why is it uh, uh, that McKinsey survey shows these results and why, um, you, and wh why is it uh, like this and how to improve the situation? Is it possible to improve the situation? Well, let's look first at one of uh, uh, fundamental components uh, of innovation change. Because as I said before, uh, change is uh, uh, innovation is a change process by nature. So the more we learn about it, the more chances uh, we can develop a better understanding of innovation process and as a result, improve that process. Since, uh, 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 since ancient time, uh, uh, people were trying to understand the nature of change. And what they observed that while change uh, uh, itself was an inescapable element of life, people's fear of change was another constant. And I think the main reason of this fear uh, is uh, actually a fear of unknown and uncertainty of what change can bring. But fear is a mind killer. So perhaps due to this uh, fear, people tried to find patterns and laws uh, that would help them to understand and navigate through change. Even 2,500 years ago, people observed uh, that every situation in life goes through a six stages cycle. They captured this knowledge uh, uh, in, a, in the ancient Chinese uh, text, I Ching, translated as the Book of Changes. And those mutable but uh, predictable changes were coming into being, developing, transformation, moving towards the highest potential, um, achieving peak potential, understanding towards the finale. What they realize that uh, those who understand that change is a rule, not ex exception, uh, have much uh, higher chance to realize opportunities that change brings. You can also uh, probably see, you can easily see that uh, uh, all these uh, uh, six stages are applicable, for example, to uh, a product life cycle, you know, what uh, we have in our businesses, going from a product idea to, uh, to the end of life stage. So even um, though the process of change follows the same six stages, uh, one change can be quite different from another, considering their scale, speed or complexity. So how to find the right approach, how to manage the change? One, uh, one such approach, um, uh, b before I talk, uh, b before I talk the, about the approach, um, um, I want to uh, highlight that uh, Dave, uh, Dave Snowden, uh, uh, who is expert uh, uh, in the knowledge management and complexity science, and who also was uh, um, a director at IBM's Institute uh, for Knowledge Management, he pointed out uh, that to find the right solutions, uh, you need to understand the context. So, and our context, uh, context is a modern world and it becomes more and more complex. We have more and more data as uh, Dan was uh, 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 talking about in previous uh, uh, presentation. So, and there are many different approaches and frameworks how to manage change. I'm sure you know uh, many of them, but in my opinion, uh, the most effective ones are those that take systems approach. So now I'll talk about the uh, approach uh, that I find very useful when 
I think when uh, uh, when I think about change, when I think about innovation as well. So this approach is uh, uh, Kunevin framework, and uh, it was uh, created by Dave Snowden uh, in 1999. Kunevin is a Welsh word, and apologies if uh, uh, my pronunciation is not uh, good enough. Uh, and uh, while there are no direct, I believe there is no uh, direct translation in English, it means environment and it's uh, multiple factors that uh, influence us. So the framework helps to make sense uh, of the situation and choose the right approach to change management, avoiding problems when uh, people try to apply uh, preferred management style in any circumstances. So according to the framework, there are five uh, may, uh, five um, decision making uh, uh, system states, states, and they they are defined by cause and effect uh, relationships. So two um, of the domains are ordered domains, simple or obvious. Uh, this domain represents known knowns, and it's uh, characterized by stability of the situation and uh, clear cause and effect relationship. The right answer here is self-evident and uh, the decisions are uh, unquestioned uh, because all share the same understanding. In other domain, complicated domain, uh, represents known unknowns. In this domain, there is still clear cause and effect relationship but there are many casual uh, factors and uh, uh, multiple solutions exist. Then there are two non-ordered domains, complex or domain of unknown unknowns uh, with entangled uh, uh, relationships, non-linear causality, where it might be impossible to identify one correct answer. And chaotic domain, where uh, there is no relationship between cause and effect, or it's impossible to establish it. And this domain is domain of crisis and emergency situations. And the fifth domain confused is, uh, uh, it is where you don't know yet if the situation is obvious, complicated, complex or chaotic. So what do you do in, in these domains? Let's start with obvious. In this domain, the relationship between cause and effect, as I said, is uh, predictable and simple. That means that there are often clearly defined steps in the process uh, and they're based on the best practice. When you are in this domain, your objective is uh, the optimal, perfect solution. For example, Problems encountered with insurance claims are often predictable and there are processes in place to handle most of them. Uh, so the response mode in this case is sense, categorize, respond. You should assess the facts, categorize them, and then respond by following the best practice, which is usually gives one established correct answer. Okay. The next domain is uh, complicated. Here, the correct answer is not uh, uh, self-evident and uh, there might be multiple right solutions. To decide what to do, you will likely need the help of experts. That's why this domain also called domain of experts. To deal with a complicated situation, you will need to assess uh, the situation, analyze what's known, and then decide on the best response using good practice. Your focus in this domain is on efficiency. For example, you may know that something is wrong with your health, but you would need to see various medical experts to diagnose, diagnose what's wrong. In complex domain, 
you will leave uh, the comfort zone of known cause and effect um, uh, relationship rules, and you will have uh, probably a, a hard time to determine them anyway. You can understand why uh, things happen only in retrospect. That's why experimentation becomes the very important tool and you apply actually emergent practice by running parallel safe to fail experiments to identify what actually works. And you can see from the description that these days many business uh, uh, situations fall into this domain. The, the best approach here is to probe, sense, respond. And you strive for effectiveness, which means that you're trying to achieve a desired change. Moving to the chaotic domain, your primary goal here is a survival. You will need to have an effect on the situation trying to stabilize it before you actually can you know, make a decision what to do. So that's why the action mode here is first act decisively so to address most pressing issues and establish order. Then sense where stability is present and where it's not, and then respond. And the fifth domain, uh, confused. If if you don't know in what situation you are, as I said, you're in the confused domain. So in these circumstances, your primary primary goal would be is to gather more information and then act accordingly. So how to move uh, between the domains? If you find yourself in a chaotic domain, you will need to gain control over the situation in order to move to the complex domain. To move from uh, complex to complicated, you will need to understand the situation. And to move from complicated to obvious, you will need to uh, optimize your processes, uh, define standard procedures, effectively trying to reduce complexity, so simplifying things. When you reach uh, the uh, simple, obvious state, however, the closer you get to the perfect solution, the more susceptible you become to new or unforeseen challenges, as everything was tailored too perfectly to a particular type of problem and environment. So effectively, the system uh, becomes too rigid. This means that changes in the environment may push you over the cliff from the obvious to chaotic domain very easily. Uh, and I believe many successful companies experienced mm -hmm. this when pandemic pushed them over the, effectively over the cliff and, then and they found themselves in the state of crisis. So the changes caused by pandemic were too sudden and too big for companies to manage using the obvious uh, uh, domain action mode. Considering a uh, link between change and innovation. So complex domain has a higher potential as there are limited uh, constraints. Innovation, of course, will be happening in other domains as well, and even in obvious domain, uh, but potential is low in obvious domain, as you will be highly constrained by established processes and standards. Plus, there is uh, this danger, danger zone between obvious and a chaotic domain. So if we think about innovation as a change process, then you could probably associate different types of innovation with different uh, change domains. For example, incremental type of innovation, uh, where change triggered by innovation is small and well understood, would fall into um, other domains, uh, uh, obvious or complicated. While transformational innovation would be best, uh, of course, managed by a complex domain approach. So what is the uh, uh, best 
way, uh, uh, best approach uh, uh, to manage innovation. Again, as with change, I believe is a systems approach uh, that will allow you to accommodate for various types of uh, innovation from incremental to transformational. Often companies start building their innovation system by focusing on the processes. Why? Be maybe because it feels easier. Uh, however, when when you're building the innovation system, uh, you should consider all key elements, hence the systems approach, which are strategy, innovation capabilities required to deliver your strategy and enablers. So you start with innovation strategy that, of course, should be driven by business strategy. Then decide what innovation capabilities you need to have in order to realize this strategy. And then, in, uh, and these uh, innovation capabilities, they all include uh, innovation processes and culture. Also, of course, not forgetting about enablers that uh, uh, you need to make your system work smoothly. I won't be talking about all elements, so I'll touch just on some elements of the system. Starting with uh, uh, innovation strategy. One tip here I want to share with you that uh, you know, may help uh, uh, is a um, uh, tip about the, how to define uh, your in, uh, innovation, your strategic innovation initiatives. Um, so you should decide on your uh, focus area. So is it internal focus or external? and where uh, innovation creation will be focused. Problem focused versus opportunity driven. So by doing this, you will have much uh, easier time when you try to establish where you need to focus your uh, innovation initiatives. Another element uh, of innovation system, which often does not receive, in my opinion, high enough priority is organizational culture. One of the reasons could be that it's not an easy task uh, to define and manage it. Also, perhaps it takes time to build, to build the right culture and it's very easy to destroy or damage it. But anyway, um, here are seven elements uh, uh, of organizational culture that researchers found to support innovation, uh, innovation and creativity. The first element, strategy. Uh, and the strategy uh, needs to be customer focused uh, of marketing. It needs to have a customer focused marketing orientation and its core and also integrate core values into all activities. It also, uh, this element also demonstrates a positive reaction on change by top management, you know, who makes innovation happen. Purposefulness, this element uh, uh, indicates how well uh, employees understand company's vision, mission, and goals, and their involvement in reaching these goals. So it's very good to have uh, uh, exciting vision and mission and goals, but if, of course, employees don't understand it, then it's not helping to build this uh, uh, supporting or enabling organizational culture for innovation. Then, of course, the strengths of uh, uh, trust relationship, and it's on all levels. Then behavior that encourages innovation, like uh, encouragement to generate ideas, take calculated risks, etc. Of course, working environment uh, that include factors like uh, uh, actualization of personal goals in pursuing organizational goals, uh, constructive conflict handling, cooperation, active participation, and control of own work. Customer orientation factor that focuses on understanding of external and internal customers on operational level, and of course, uh, uh, management support for open communication, allocation, resu uh, allocation resources to innovation, 
uh, the degree to which employers are blamed for mistakes and the degree to which managers support adaptation of rules to keep up with the change. Actually, another research conducted by Gartner uh, highlighted these three uh, areas as the most important for building the culture of innovation. Uh, senior leadership posture, that includes uh, behavior and vision, innovation operationalization, and creativity development. And uh, among them, the research found that the senior leadership posture is uh, the top uh, priority area. That's why I'll just focus uh, uh, focus on that and uh, share with you a couple of tips uh, uh, how you can model the right behavior. Leaders should prioritize innovation projects, including uh, uh, the high risk ones. Mm, of course, it needs to be a calculated risk, but of, if you don't uh, prioritize innovation projects, then of innovation won't uh, uh, get enough resources and attention. Have open mind and be open to new ideas, particularly those that disrupt the sta status quo. Uh, uh, support open innovation approach that allows to realize value of company's ecosystem through collaboration and uh, uh, partnership with uh, um, third parties. And last but not least, support learning and building a strong learning and knowledge management system. But often you would say that, okay, it's all well and good, but um, uh, often uh, it's not easier for a leader to pursue truly innovative ideas. CB, now Gartner, uh, found that these uh, are the three typical barriers and some of them may resonate with you. So the leaders uh, uh, don't see value in setting uh, uh, innovation targets. They're skeptical about measurements and uh, they're concerned about the impact on performance. So what could be done to minimize those barriers? Here's an approach I want to share with you um, that was taken by Whirlpool. Uh, and uh, some of the, uh, I, you, you can take some of the ideas from this approach uh, and find them useful. So first of all, they began with giving the robust definition of innovation. And then from my experience, I think it's, it's really important because it helps to create a, a common understanding and it's not just what innovation is, but uh, also how innovation helps to realize the business strategy. This clarity in return um, also boosts people's motivation as they understand why they need to innovate. And also, of course, it helps to choose the right KPIs to measure innovation outcomes. So, Next thing they did, uh, they categorized uh, uh, innovation uh, by putting in place a simple uh, and adaptable system to track innovation and also set uh, uh, clear guidelines for developing an innovation project business case. Also to secure leadership accountability and responsibility for what they, for what leaders uh, consider uh, innovation, like innovation pro projects, they introduced a signed off protocol. We all know uh, that innovation projects have a higher risk of uh, higher risk of failure. And the more innovative, more transformational projects are, the more chances of failure. So if we just consider these risks, then innovation projects are much less attractive uh, for leaders to invest resources. However, if the learning value is included in the evaluation, then it allows leaders to assess innovation projects more holistically. So that's why uh, Whirlpool also uh, developed and introduced uh, a learning capture system. These are uh, the 
tips and frameworks I wanted to share with you today. But uh, uh, you could ask me perhaps like if Britannic is applying any of these approaches, and maybe you did ask, I, I'm not checking uh, the chat. <laughs> uh, uh, so in other, in other words, do we walk the talk? So the answer is yes. Britannic is really on the very exciting journey of building its innovation system. And uh, um, I'll share with you just one approach that we are implementing to strengthen our innovation capabilities. So to tap into Britannic's strong ecosystem of uh, partners, customers, uh, uh, and other stakeholders, uh, we are building Innovation Hub. So the Innovation Hub help, we, we, we hope that Innovation hub, uh, hub will help us not just to create an environment where employers can generate ideas, collaborate, co-create and prototype, but also will allow us to take uh, an open innovation approach by inviting our customers and other stakeholders. So the Hub has uh, clear goals of uh, empowering all stakeholders, uh, supporting scaled innovation and fostering the culture of innovation. How do we plan to operate the, the Hub in order to deliver uh, uh, innovative fit for purpose solutions? So the framework uh, we're building is based on the design thinking approach and consists of two phases. So research and design phase. And each of them includes three steps. In the research phase, we start with the discovery st step uh, to look at areas where innovation may uh, bring business benefits. Then we define the opportunity and verify with the key stakeholders and after that, we generate and prioritize ideas, which we take them to the next phase, design. In this phase, we first engage with the innovation, uh, with innovation hub uh, <coughs> community to develop possible solutions. Then we validate solutions by prototyping and testing them. Uh, and uh, the last step, uh, makes sure that the developed solutions is smoothly integrated in, into Britannic's business. So with all the appropriate support and training. And the goal is to deliver value to all stakeholders and realize all anticipated benefits. This concludes my uh, presentation. And uh, uh, I want to leave you with just this uh, uh, key takeaways. So innovation always brings change. So always consider innovation as a change process. There is no one methodology to manage change and innovation in all circumstances, but you will have much better chances to realize opportunities that change and innovation bring uh, if you apply systems approach. In order to choose the right uh, action mode or process, first understand what change domain you are in and then tailor your change strategy to support uh, culture of innovation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Fascinating uh, uh, topic and presentation. Uh, certainly from, from my perspective, uh, as I said at the very start of uh, the event today, innovation has always been, uh, uh, you know, key to what we do as a business. And uh, there's been many uh, innovations uh, that, that we've brought to the market. Uh, and I think the world in which we live today, um, it moves at an ever faster pace. You know, no, no one uh, business can provide the answer to everything. It, it, it's important to be open. It's important to uh, to listen, to to communicate, and you know, as we heard with Dan, it's important to uh, also take insights uh, from data. And, and I think what's what's really interesting is the different change domains that organisations, uh, you know, may be in and have to navigate through. 
uh, and I think therein lies a, uh, a challenge of uh, once you've optimized uh, processes and offerings, change happens, right? You, you talked yeah. about change being the, you know, the only constant uh, in life. So change happens and it can have a, a fundamental impact upon the, uh, the performance and the success of the business. So are there any um, uh, techniques that, uh, or, or ideas that you think are, are really important for people to consider uh, you know, whilst in that uh, that, that, that sort of simple uh, mm. uh, um, uh, domain uh, to maintain a focus of innovation. So I think that's that's a really important part is maintaining this focus of innovation. So it's, it's not innovation to necessarily react and respond and solve mm. you know, real chaotic problems it's about how do you maintain that approach moving forward so are there some are there some thoughts and ideas that you can you can give there Yes, thank you, John. It's a very good uh, uh, question because, as you said, quite often uh, people forget that uh, yes, you are in everything looks simple, uh, uh, standardized, perfect solution, etc. And but actually, there are a number of causes that may uh, push company over the cliff from obvious to chaotic domain, and it's not just uh, 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 changes in the environment as we had this uh, pandemic where you can't really control them. So today leaders are swamped with information, data, everything, and often just don't have uh, enough bandwidth uh, to process all this information. And as, as a result, uh, there is a danger of oversimplification of issues or uh, incorrect uh, incorrect classification of those issues. So other uh, problems could be with uh, entrained uh, like thinking and complacency. So when people assume that what worked before and uh, resulted in a success uh, will work again in new situations. So. My recommendation, so to mitigate this, my recommendations uh, would be, first of all, of course, to ensure that the communication channels are clear and open. So people can report any situations, even if the situation doesn't fall into uh, like any established you know, standard category. So that's a recommendation is, uh, uh, of course, to be open-minded and listen to new ideas and uh, uh, I guess the last uh, uh, recommendation on this would be uh, for leaders to be willing to pursue uh, those innovative suggestions uh, and take calculated risks because only then you can you know find solutions that can help you uh, uh, to stay in the controlled uh, um, domains, you know, where in, in order domains where you have control of the situation. Thank you, and I, and I think you know, for me, it's it, it's it, it is that embedding innovation and uh, being open to change uh, within the culture of an organisation. Um, yeah. we, we've we've talked with customers, in fact, you know, working with Dan for for many years, and uh, you know, other like minded. Uh, uh, uh customers is, is being prepared to try new things um you know yes data can help to provide insight but you know we we're problem solving we're trying new ideas um we're, we're prepared to you know try and fail um and actually learn from this so i think um you know learning is really important it's about uh you know we've run many pilots with customers to to, to validate thinking and ideas and, and, and undertake tests. And, you know, as part of that, it, it, we shouldn't be afraid to change, right? And, you know, even if we start on a particular path and a journey, we, we, it's about ongoing learning and how we shift and how we pivot and how we learn along the way. So I think learning, innovation mm -hmm. uh, and data insights, you know, the, the, these are, principles that are really going to be really important uh, for organizations uh, moving forward. So fantastic presentation, really insightful. Uh, you know, I hope you've all enjoyed the uh, the first session. Uh, we've got uh, coffee break now. So uh,
please do get chance to uh, to refill those cups and uh, uh, have the tipple of choice. And uh, what we'll do is we'll return at uh, quarter past eleven uh, for the uh, for the next session, uh, and we'll be starting off with uh, Andrew Nash uh, uh, taking us through a presentation entitled SD WAN: The Death Knell for MPLS, or is it? So. Uh, there's a question to ponder uh, during the coffee break. So we'll see you all again shortly. Thank you for your interest uh, and attendance and uh, look forward to uh, uh, picking up again soon.